Yeah, so before I introduce Sheila and Renee, um, I'm just going to take a second to uh, first thank the IITA for making this possible because uh, we came, we went to them, um, them being the wonderful people of Maureen, Lisa, and Jason, and said, we have this idea. And they were like, that sounds nice. Um, let's do that. And that was pretty much the whole process. It was just that easy. Uh, I'm joking. It was a long conversation. But um, yeah, so uh, first of all, thanks to the ITA. Um, and in this case, also thanks to Viaduct Sheet Metal and the Sheet Metals and Ally Sheet Metal. Oh, I get this one wrong because they're different in different areas. It's the Sheet Metal and Roofing Workers. Yes. Yes. Uh, from, from the Lower Mainland. Um, so they've lent us Sheila in the past and continue to be an active partner in a bunch of different projects that we do. Um, so yeah, so the general format of this, this session is gonna be talking about the projects. Um, feel free to ask questions as we go. I did set aside a bunch of time at the end for people to either go home or uh, to ask questions. And, uh, but we can also ask questions as we go. We all pretty much know each other. Um, and then the second section of this will be talking about uh, Sheila's trade, her career and her journey and the kind of different pathways that are available into sheet metal. Um, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with the trade, there's some kind of cool opportunities. It is one of those trades that direct entry um, straight from straight into an apprenticeship is a lot more accessible than other trades. Um, and so, yeah, so we'll talk about that. Uh, before we launch into everything, I just want to remind everybody that um, the, all three of these projects are up on our um, on our Skills Ready Projects website. And some of you may be familiar with this because you've contributed ideas and made this possible. Um, we're constantly looking to grow this. Um, so if you do have an idea that you want to share, please do. Um, you can email it to us. Uh, you also just drop it off and come say hi um, now that the world is starting to open up. Just no more than 10 of you at a time, please. Um, so today's projects, there's all three of them are on, up there online and you can follow through. You can print the project, which will print a PDF for you. Um, and then we've got some pictures and a step-by-step -step guide. So, uh, so all of this is here. Um, for the, for the carry some, the Sheetmail toolbox is also a video that's available that uh, Sheila made. So, um, so yeah. Um, Hi, I'm Richard Nagelsworth. I'm Sheila Fabric. That's going. So before, without further ado, let me introduce Renee Regatli, our Director of Youth Programming, I believe is his title. And, uh, and he leads our Skills Ready Initiative. And Sheila Sadler, who I don't actually know what your official title is, but Sheila is one of the coolest human beings that I know. Um, and uh, also one of the most creative. So I'll leave it to them. Okay. Uh, I'll go very briefly. Um, so, yeah, the director of project operations is is uh, another title that uh, that's the one on my business card. But uh, um, that's kind of fancy talk for um, connecting uh, educators and students with employers uh, in any way kind of imaginable, whatever whatever fits. Uh, I work primarily with um, starting around grade five, all the way up to grade 12. So in the K to 12 system primarily. Um, and one of the most enjoyable parts of the job is working with um, tradespeople like Sheila, uh, going into classes and doing hands-on projects and really getting young people excited so that they're receptive to hearing the information. You know. Um, there's, there's a, a wealth of information around, but uh, the kids are, I think, sometimes so inundated with it that it doesn't, doesn't make an impression. And just find that when there's that, um, the joy of making, of discovery, of exploration, that, you know, the, the, the ears are open for a little while. And, uh, and Sheila has a really um, engaging and manner and compelling story. So I'll turn it over to, to Sheila. Hi, I'm Sheila. Uh, I would say my title is Tin Basher, but what we would say nowadays is Journey. Uh, I've been in the trades for 17, 18 years now. Uh, I love, love coming to spend time with your kids. It's by far the most fun I get to have and um, getting to talk to them. And, and as Renee said, it's really nice 
when you're engaged and making a project because they're just chatting with you. So in that way, it's kind of more of a personal conversation. So I can go around the room and have a very short but quick conversation with everyone and kind of try and fit in, hey, what do you want to do? Why do you want to do that? That kind of stuff. Um, so I really enjoy going into the classrooms and spending some time there. Plus, it's a really good break from the other thing that I do is safety. So um, it's a really good break from safety to hang out with the kids and, and just have a really good time with them. Um, I'm not sure how far Renee wants me to go on my story yet. So I, I, I think if, if you want to just kind of do a quick, you know, start, how did you, how did you first did, oh, come to the trades and, you know, just, just a so my, short form, but my background's is back um i grew up with a single mom and one sister and we weren't very wealthy let's put it that way we were on the lower end of the scale and um as i grew up i went to alternative schools which i'm super thankful for the alternative schools i never ever would have gotten through the school system without them so in that way um very grateful to teachers. I also, so I graduated at 19. I took a little bit longer than a few other people. And when I graduated, I had kids right away at 21 and 24 and I got married and I stayed home for 10 years and it was, it was a good life, um, but it didn't work out well. So then I came back and I started driving school bus. Um, and I can tell you school bus is probably one of the hardest jobs you can have on the planet, even though you're with them for an hour, you have to drive and pay attention to them and all of that. And it was very stressful and not a very good paying job. And I had two very small girls to raise and take care of. So um, I landed up waitressing after that, because that's where girls land up going is to waitressing. And while I was waitressing, I was serving a lot of um, gentlemen and trades and things like that. And I always used to think it'd be really fun and great to be able to buy my lunch every day. I, it sounds so small, but I couldn't afford it at that point. So I went waitressing. And when I was waitressing, there was a ad on a paper for the Trades Discovery BCIT. So I got um, involved in that because I had worked with my plumber husband and I knew I could work in the trades and, and I was capable. So I went to BCIT and I took the 20 trades for 20 weeks. Totally thought I would be a woodworker because it smells so good and it's so pretty when it's done and all that. Um, but I got into that class and did you know that when you mess up in woodwork, you can't put it back together? So that was very frustrating to me. So when I got into metal class, I really loved the fact that if I made a mistake, I could put it back together, grind it down and start over. So that was um, very appealing to me. But I also really, there's a sense of pride when you build something that uh, you, you don't get from somewhere else. When you finish something and you look at it and you can say, I made that, you can stand up proud every day. And at the end of the day, know that you worked hard and you made that. And that came from you and your energy and what you put out. So um, the pride for me was a very big part of it. Once I got into the, uh, I took a structural fab. So I wanted to, I wanted to work on bridges and, and heavier things. I took the entry level at BCIT, which is um, another five months of school. And I went looking for a job and I couldn't find the job because I'm not a very big girl and I'm a girl. So no guys wanted to work with girls in that trade because it's so heavy. So I went back to waitressing at the exact same restaurant. And this very lovely young man came in one day and I said, hey, I got a minute. What do you what do you do for a living? And he's like, oh, I do sheet metal. And I was, oh, do you take well, make well? And started talking metal talk. And he was really confused because I was all dressed up and makeup and all that going on. And I explained to him that I had gone and taken this course, but I couldn't find work. And he went away with his lunch. And about half an hour later, he came back and put some papers on the counter and said, I made you an appointment. And I was like, for what? Free sheet metal, we're half a block down the street. Um, it's the same thing, just a lighter gauge. Um, so you have an appointment tomorrow and come in and, and meet our um, coordinator. And I did that. That was a Wednesday. I met her on Thursday. And on Friday, I went out and looked for um, something close to home because I still had small girls. And I went to four shops. And the last shop I hit was a woman. And she's the only woman who owns a shop in our union. And she had never worked with a girl before in 25 years. So she hired me right away and I went from making $8 an hour and only working like six, six hours a day to $12 an hour 
right away. And then um, within three months, I got my apprenticeship and I got my pension and medical and dental and all of those things. So everything started to move forward because I got the job that I have now. And it's helped me to be able to raise my family on my own. Uh, I have been able to buy a townhouse, which is pretty amazing in, in the lower mainland, um, and just be able to take care of my family and, and raise them and make sure that they had a good start in their life. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell, um, but there's more to it as we go through. Renee, I'll drag it and bring it out of me. Amazing. So at, at this point, we would normally when we're doing the, the, the workshops that, that, um, that in, in the classes that, that, that Sheila mentioned, this is the part where we would then either talk about metal or, uh, you know, get into the specifics because we, we typically would pick one project um, in, a, in a, you know, 50 minute or 75 minute class. Um, and uh, at this point, Sheila would talk a little bit. Usually, you're in a either in a shop class or in a you know a gym or something, and it's really easy to start pointing up into the ceiling and start start talking about HVAC and so on. So there are a number of immediate trades depending on the building or the setup. Sometimes you know with COVID, we've been doing a lot outside, so sometimes it's just the exhaust or that can be cladding or or roofing. So I don't know if um, we don't have we don't have a huge amount of time and it'd be nice to be able to go through the projects are are people that are um in here do you want to spend a little bit more time on on sheet metal as a trade and, and sort of related uh trades or do you want to shift over to the project i i think that it might be well it's been really nice having the background in that um, shifting into looking at the projects, but then we might shift back into the uh, into the occupation and the trade, just so that we don't miss anything. So that's what I'd recommend. Okay. Any other thoughts? Does that sound like a good plan? Can get a couple of thumbs up. <laughs> Ed, okay. <laughs> All right. So Sheila, you I, I know you've got some. Uh, do you want to start maybe with the. Uh, with the little toolbox, I think that's- For sure. Uh, um, so normally when, when we show up, um, I prep everything and I bring it with me because um, for the classrooms that we go into on average don't have tools. So I do all the breaking and everything is, is made here at Viaduct and then I bring it with us. If you have access to more tools, if you had a shear um, and a break, you pretty much can pull this project off with that and snips. I brought, um, like this is a tool of our trade. So um, red cuts right, green cuts left um, and they're, maybe you can get a pair of these for 15 to $20 and that's for cutting the metal. So that's something that's accessible if you're going to be doing a smaller project. What, or, what gauge, what gauge is it? Um, I probably up to about 20 after that, it starts to get a little bit harder on your hands. Um, if you're a bigger guy with stronger hands, you can probably do 18, but you're probably going to strain your hand quite a bit. Um, grinders are good for that also, and they're not too expensive, but I would suggest that the, the adult is the grinder part just because they are one of our more unsafe tools. Um, but if you have access to, to shears or anything like that, then you can do that. If it's a very thin, thin metal, you can use a paper cutter actually the old school ones that you like that, they, um, they will cut it. And you can also get your blanks, which is just the basic square, um, cut at a metal shop and then bring them in. And then the rest of the project's quite easy to lay out and cut with the snips. So in that way, but when we do show up at the school, I come with the end pieces. So these are the ends and then the, the actual box itself. And then there's um, a conduit handle. So uh, I did a paper version also, just to show you that we can 
we can do the layout, which is learning how to, to set it all up and all that and on paper. And then I just used a ruler to do my, my breaking, to do my bends. So you can do it with paper or hardboard or even a construction paper would work really well for that. Um, the one thing that we do kind of cross over into is sewing. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but um, if you see here, there's hems right here so that we don't get hurt. Um, and hems and things like that do cross over into sewing. So sometimes you can like, I'll talk to them about like, hey, did you take home Mac? And when you made shorts, you did this for hems and things like that. And I can cross them over into that. Plus math, there's lots of fractions. That's mostly what we do in math is fractions. So you can um, like, if it's gonna be this big and how, how can we lay it out and then do the math involved in that. So it's good that way that you can bring math into it too. Um, and then when we put them together, we use pop rivets. So pop rivets are just cute little um, metal that goes through and then it pulls through. Renee has a pop rivet, hem pop rivet one, um, and they're quite cheap. Yeah, this, also, this, is, so this, is, this is one you can get in, in any uh, hardware store. Um, Sheila and the sheet metal workers have got uh, some, um, what do they cost? Around 200 bucks each? Yeah, I think they're the, about that. The, yeah, the, uh, the Milwaukee, the, the, the cordless them. ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it makes it quite a bit quicker. Not going to fib on that part. Uh, we like to bring both though, because then we get like someone to try the hand stuff and the old school stuff, so they can try it out and and use different tools. The idea is to get as many different tools in their hands as we can at one time. So um, within a classroom, we can put this whole box together with a hammer, a wrench and um, a pop riveter. So it's, uh, I was really pleasantly surprised how the, much the kids enjoy making this toolbox and what they're gonna use it for and, and that kind of stuff. And they love to sticker them and all that kind of stuff. So it was really fun to see them be excited to make a toolbox because it's something that we do all day long is bang metal together. So it's, it's neat to see what they think is fun and exciting. Right. So, but um, so yeah, that's the dual box one. Um, and and like I said, you could do it in paper or cardboard or anything like that. Um, Sheila, how how long would it take? Do you think if if um, you were in a in a shop class and the the students were doing the the, the whole thing, the layout, um, the the shearing and breaking. Um, if it wasn't a large class, you could probably get them through in an hour um, okay. with the layout and maybe do your layout before and then actually build the box at another point in time. Um, so this is the video of us making it. Uh, yeah, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a long project, but explaining it and laying it out would be the harder, longer part of it because you have to explain how to to do all of the lines and stuff like that. But you could probably in a small class, two hours, in one hour from start to finish. Okay. So this was one of the questions that has been asked previously around the idea of a break. I think you use an 18 foot break, you said, or eight foot break here. At my work? Yeah, yeah we have eight foot, 10 foot, 12 foot. So um, this is one of the harder ones to access is the break. Um, you can though purchase, I do believe there are 12 foot or 12 inch breaks. So it's like a tabletop one that you can get. That's, I think they're around two or $300 somewhere in there. So that's something that's definitely usable in a classroom. Is this something you could use uh, like a hand, like just a crimp for or anything like that? Yeah, actually, you totally could use a crimp bar with this, to, to be honest. Um, and that's quite a bit cheaper. I never even thought of that. Thank you, Jordan. Um, it was, I mean, it was your idea a year and a half ago. So it, you did think about it. But. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, good. I like it when I plan ahead. Um, yeah, you could actually. And that's something that you would just pick up at Home Depot also. And um, you might have to change your allowances a little bit to match to what the bar will fold. But um, yeah, you, you could definitely do that. Um, as you see here, like it's quite a bit big equipment that we work with, right? So that's why we break them all up before we come out. Plus it also makes it so we can have like 30 kits in the classroom and build them all within an hour. So that helps quite a bit. Yep. 
do you want to look at a different one project or do you have any questions about that project i don't know if if, if people want to unmute i think jordan is that an issue if people unmute or should they it uh, looks like there's a couple of questions in the chat maybe or that's that from you jordan. okay that's me yeah yeah okay yeah, so I, I didn't address it at the top. Um, this is the joy of doing it with a friendly audience. If you do have questions, just jump in, um, but also post them in the chat. I have an eye up for that and I can add them to, ask them to Sheila. Yeah, um, the, did you wanna, uh, which which was the next project? I'll, I'll queue up, oh. The, oh, Brandy's got a question. Brandy? Um, I, I like that project, it, it's really neat. Um, there's a lot of prep work and that kind of stuff is I'm not too sure who's doing all the prep work and uh, uh, you're doing <laughs> it's, the prep work. It's me. <laughs> is, that, is, is it your union that sponsors this? Uh, the, um, the this project, actually my company, Viaduct, sponsors this project and they um, they burn it all up on the, actually we have a water jet, so we do it all on the water jet and um, and they supply all the metal for us. They, they donate it to the program. Um, I'm wondering, has, has this been, have you gone into any classrooms yet? Uh, yeah, we've done this project, oh, I'd say probably 10 times, I think, maybe even more. And what That's sort of a age little, A little bit it? more than that. We've done it with several hundred students. Yeah. So what's sort of the age group and how are you sort of finding that, what age group is really engaging with it and which ones are not so much? I have gone all the way from five-year-olds to grade 12. So yeah. Okay. all the genre um oddly enough like i said they actually all really enjoy doing it i, I don't think that i i've been in alternative schools where and i came from alternative schools so these kids are a little more less engaged in things and they kind of just walk away and go whatever and the teacher will say to me oh my gosh sheila this is amazing they they don't do things and then they will actually stay um the copper bracelet we had one boy 17 year old boy who made two and he had a really good time doing it. So um, I think it appeals to all of them to be really honest with you. Uh, and I also, with the, the carry-all, the toolbox, um, we talk about what they're gonna do with it, right? So like a five-year-old is super excited to put his stuffies in it and things like that. And then I'll talk to a 15-year-old and, and maybe she's excited because she's gonna use it to to do projects at home and, and things like that, or, or give it to their grandparents or something like that. So it, it, I find that it appeals to all of them. I honestly don't think I've had a kid not enjoy themselves while they've worked with us. It's I, I teach the, a construction trade sampler and I don't cover any sheet metal. Um, it would, I know that my kids would be, would, and their grade 11s mainly, uh, they would probably really like it making the project and then tying in uh, the industry and all that stuff because we don't really cover it, but I bet you also the skills exploration classes and there's lots of them going on around the province. I like the idea of that not too big, not too long, and the kids get success right away. Yep. Uh, way better than what we usually do as teachers trying to drag something out as long as you can because you've got such limited resources. Um, so if there was uh, companies that wanted to do it, maybe in our, I'm from Vancouver Island, that if there was uh, a similar type of sheet metal company or union over here that was willing to to go into a classroom like that it would be really cool do you well, believe uh, go ahead Brittany. Yep. yeah we i mean we're developing those relationships sheila and i went up to prince rupert and spent two days with all the grade eights um at prince rupert middle school yeah. um and it was super well received i think we did in the end we did eight, either eight or nine workshops like we did you know one after another and they just kind of <laughs> cycled <Crick. around. laughs> it, was, it was lots of fun though um yes. and we're going over to victoria for three days um doing copper bracelet workshops so um we we do obviously need to um viaduct has been fantastic mm -hmm. but you know copper particularly is expensive and it, you know we need to broaden the uh the supporters um, get more supporters in. So, yeah. yeah. This is where I would add in if if you do want to do something like this in your school or you are looking to say bring it into a classroom, um, 
there are like you can contact us directly we are able to do it in most parts of the province right now and we are starting to look at what next september to june look like as well so if there's an interest in there and then um yeah um i don't know are there other questions at all because there's two more projects here. I, I'm more than welcome to. We, we do a lot of woodwork in our district right now, and I'm just trying to branch away from just woodwork. So we did some electronic stuff with this year with the junior uh, students. So I've been dabbling on what to get into for metalwork and do it, you know, grade wide at grade six or grade seven. So I'm very keen. You guys are more than welcome to come up to Courtney always. Beautiful part yeah. of the process. I was thinking I'd go to Courtney and Harvey. We'll put you up, no problem. So, you know. But uh, so yeah, so I'm very interested in this just because I know that we can do some smaller stuff at the elementary schools, you know, in an easy morning, right? Yeah. The other thing that I forgot to mention about sheet metal is it's kind of a secret trade. Um, so you guys are saying you do lots of woodwork and that kind of stuff. Um, people don't know what it is and it's everywhere. It's in every building, it's in every house, it's in everything that we have, it's in our kitchens. It's, it's literally one of the most um, widely used in our houses and it's a really good paying job. It's we are actually at the top of the food chain when it comes to um, our union wages and all that. So that is something um, a lot of times when I say how much money I make, the teachers kind of go like, what? And they want to come with me too. So um, it's a really great way. The other thing that Viaduct Red does is we run a program where the high school kids come and work with us. And they work with us for either three weeks or a whole semester. And we make sure they get paid and they can see what it is to get paid as a tradesperson and be able to earn a wage that will help to support their families. So that's been a really great way to get kids into the trade too, is through finding companies that you can bring the kids into and, and get them some job shadowing and all that. So that's been really good too. So I just want to mention that part. Sheila, you want to try the uh, maybe the, the copper bracelet? Sure. Um, so I very quickly bang this one out so it's not as pretty as the other ones that we've made in the past. But it's a strip of copper. Um, I think you got 24 ounce, didn't you? I think it's 22 gauge, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, and so you kind of want a, not a heavy gauge at all. Copper is nice because it's softer, but, um, and it's just a strip. We do either five, five and a half or six inch um, by three quarters. And you, um, it's just a flat strip. And then we give the kids uh, sandpaper. So they learn how to sand and what emery cloth is and a few different of those. And um, there's a nicer one. I think that's the first one I made actually. But uh, then they get to use a torch or for, then they get to hammer it, which there's some, some kids who get really excited about a hammer and then they get quite carried away with the hammer, which is awesome also. And then they get to use the torch and the younger kids really excited about that. But the other fun part about that is when you eat the copper, it changes colors. And so then Renee talks about the science behind the copper molecular structures and all those things. And I just like to smash things and, and heat them up with heat. So, um, it's a very easy, simple project to do, and you can literally change it into whatever you want. Um, I, it, I don't, there's not much tools involved. There's a torch, there's a hammer. Um, you could get punches if you want. We bring an engraver with us. Uh, after we torch it, I like to sand it back and then they can kind of change it up and things like that. Uh, it's not a cheap project, but it's not as expensive as it could be because it's a very small piece of copper. So that's the nice part about it. And it's very malleable so you can work it with your hands and you don't need a bunch of crazy tools to do this project. Uh, this project goes over really well with the kids and that's all the way from kindergarten and up. Um, copper is really good for arthritis so we talk about that a little bit and then they get excited because they're going to make their grandparents or their parents something if they're not into it so then I can kind of associate it to somebody else so that they're really excited to make a project to give away and they love that any questions on that one it's it's really simple but very effective this one yeah. I'll also mention that he's done this with a half inch copper pipe uh, like a, an old half inch copper pipe and curious oh. how did you do that with cutting the pipe or you just smashed it into shape Smash, i would smash that yeah 
Or cut it in half. I mean, it's soft, so you can. That's the great part about copper is it's soft, and you can and change it to what you want, kind of almost, right? Reusing copper pipe is a great idea, though. Yeah. One of the considerations sure. that we've uh, talked about in the past with this project is uh, you do light it on fire. Uh, yes, we do. There is a torch involved, and the kids love that part. They get really excited when the wood underneath catches on fire also, but um, it's all safe. It's all done in a, in a good fashion. <laughs> but we're also teaching them about fire a little bit at the same time, like you can't run around with it, that kind of stuff. So, right. so, so, so typically we have, um, when Sheila and I are there, uh, we have two torches. So it's kind of like each have a torching station. So when the, when the students have finished, um, cause they, it, it's, it's a square piece. So they need to use the emery cloth. I give them emery cloth rather than a file. So it takes a little bit longer to round it. And, you know, they, they have to do it to, to, to their kind of specifications. Um, and typically they don't, it doesn't have a burr, but, you know, occasionally there's a tiny little bit of burr. So they, they need to take that off and then they, they stress it with the ball peen hammer. Um, and then they come up to the torching station and do do the torching. And there's usually, you know, the, the next two or three are, are watching to see because it flips really suddenly. Um, so that that's the, you know, the safety aspect. Obviously, we've got, the, you know, fire extinguishers, etc. But I, um, you know, we have like a sheet of plywood and then each each kid has, I've got some offcuts from other projects. So that's that's what they're, you know, beating on and then burning, right? So, um, it, you know, thus far, like I said, we've this one we've done. I, I would say over a thousand um, students, and we haven't had any any issues. Yeah, um, everyone still has their eyebrows. And, uh, yeah, from the fire point of view, absolutely nothing. I had one kid who who mashed his finger with the hammer once. Um, pretty good out of a thousand, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one of the other questions that comes up uh, with this project is because uh, you, you the prior you've done this mostly with kind of like a discovery age group. So I know that it's been a lot of middle schools, but also some of the um, sort of high school students in adult programs. We've done this with First Nation schools as well. Um, do you have a chance within like besides looking at the tools, is there a chance to kind of tie it to sheet metal as a trade or to other aspects of the trade? We, we talk about sheet metal in general, right? Um, copper is used on roofing quite a bit. Um, and then you can do a lot of really beautiful art with copper. So it definitely ties into my trade. Uh, we don't do that here because we're age back. But if you went into like, um, well, you see copper roofing all over the place nowadays, right? They have the little front um, copulas and all that. Yeah, it fully ties into to sheet metal. And, and then I can talk to them again about venting. And I just say like, this is a fun project and I don't get to do something like this every day, uh, but it relates to the same, using the same tools and that kind of thing. And it, it does give, because copper was um, used by indigenous people for, um, you know, native copper exists. So, you know, because it is, has a, um, is very malleable. Um, it's something that has been worked um, from earliest times and was, you know, was used here in, uh, on, the, on the West Coast. So that, that's another kind of a, a, a tie-in because this project has, um, you know, an artistic element to it. Um, it does give you lots of different opportunities. I mean, it, it you know, we've referred to copper um, piping and also, you know, it's conductivity. So there's, there's lots of different directions that you can, um, that you can touch on and just, you know, show its, its versatility of the material. And one of the, this is me uh, transitioning to the other project. So what, what are the things that I know you've done as well is uh, same tools, different processes to make the aluminum ring bowl. Um, yeah, this one's actually even simpler almost. Um, so I just cut a blank and then I drew a circle. Uh, aluminum is very soft, so it's really easy to cut with snips. And so you can get a lighter gauge of aluminum, not crazy light because it is soft, um, make a circle. And then all I did was take a 
uh, two by four and hammered it so that it had a nice good dent in it. And then you just work it. Um, you don't get to do a lot of this kind of at my job, obviously, but uh, it, you can tie it into a aluminum and how soft it is and all of the science behind the aluminum, but also this is literally blacksmithing. So you can draw in a little bit of blacksmithing with that part. It's probably the simplest of the three, to be honest, because it's just a hammer snips and all you need to do is make a circle and work your way around it. So um, it's really quite pretty too. I keep it on my desk at work and keep candy in it and things like that. So it, it's a functional piece. It's also something that, that they will have and, and use for their life, right? I still have a wood bowl. I made in grade nine and I still keep things in it. So in that way, I've, I've been trying to pick projects that will actually be something they can use and keep and, and move forward with them. Amazing. Yeah, and with this one, you've done this uh, with, I think, grade sixes and grade fives as well. Uh, I, I can't remember which ones. To be yeah, I, 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 th I think it was, uh, I'm pretty, it was in an elementary school. I can't remember which grade it was, but yeah, yeah. That, that's, that sounds about right. Yeah, and is there any adaptation, like, so with the, with the SNPs, I mean, they're big, <laughs> so there's a, a challenge there, but is there any adaptation that you take this project for smaller groups or younger groups? You just use a lighter metal almost, and you could almost use, um, like, a heavier scissor would work for a lighter gauge aluminum. Uh, you're not going to be happy with your scissors afterwards, but they'll cut through it and, and get there. Um, the only thing I would worry about with cutting with snips is that you can get fish hooks. So you have to make sure that you teach them not to close your snips all the way and, and, and teach it. And that's a great thing to learn actually in general in the trade, right? Is to not finish your, your snips while you're going through and that'll stop the fish hooks. So do you, um, do you take a box of Desi damps with you into the classroom and teach kids how to put in Desi damps? Cause that must be super noisy hammering those plates. No, the teachers don't love me, not going to fib. Um, they've been asked to, to go outside once or twice because we're disrupting the whole floor. Um, no, they make a lot of noise when they hammer these. So uh, we try and take them outside if we can. It's also nice to be outside and, we're, and we do feel like we're not disturbing the world. Um, but yeah, we have done them in classrooms and definitely the next door neighbor teachers are like, shh. Yeah. Okay, so you just need a piece of two by four and the little circles and some balls. Yeah, and a hammer. You could even do it on a bean bag. If you had bean bags, oh, you could do okay. the same kind of idea, right? Um, it's a fun project also, because again, if you choose different hammers, you can make different dents. Um, on the hammers that we use for the uh, copper bracelets, Renee's had uh, taken the ball peens and changed the shapes of them. So when they hammer, they can change the shapes and stuff like that too. So yeah, that's just, quite I just ground down the head a little bit. So some of them are a little pointier, you know, like kind of like old fashioned cobbler's hammers and oh, they yeah. get a whole whole range rather than trying to break out punches and um, mm -hmm. yeah. But you could punch, like if you had a set of punches, you could do names in it. They, um, the engraver, they have a really good time with the engraver. Uh, Brene had one girl just, draw a beautiful feather on it and it was stunning and, and she had a great time doing that. So, and that again brings metal into art. Um, I talk a bit about that. Quite a bit of stuff in my house is made out of metal because I just don't go buy things anymore. I say, oh, I need a table. Sweet, I'll just go to work and make it. So um, I bring that into it too. Any other questions about the projects? Nice. If, 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 I, if I can toot, toot Sheila's horn for a second, I, I think one of the things that you, you really get across well is, is the, the pride element and the, uh, that, that kind of self-sufficiency of, um, you know, problem solving of, of and, and it's, it's kind of a, a really natural um, element because we're, we're often setting up, we're generally setting up in a place that's not really intended for this. So we're kind of modeling um, problem solving and you know, making sure that 
that you know things are done safely, that people are 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 you know separated out, and and all of those kind of things. But I, I think Sheila does a really fantastic job of of conveying that that sense of con calm confidence that that comes from uh, you know an experienced tradesperson. So I I think that's a that's you know you. you you look at the 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 kid. I get to I get to sit back and watch, um, and look at the kids' faces, and and I I think that's for me that's one of the neatest things to see is the the impact as as the the words and the images kind of sink in. Uh, Sheila, can you sort of relate the math that a sheet metal worker would be typically using, or what the expectations are, because um, that's always. That's something that we always try to relate, but what, what is the math and that kind of stuff? Um, so math has not always been my friend. Math is not fun to me. Mm -hmm. um, we have a teacher who says math is fun all the time and I'm always like, you know, you're wrong. Uh, but it's a lot of fractions. So uh, I can bang out fractions in my head like craziness. And then um, there's a little bit of a, uh, it's so do or I can't remember it's been so long trigonometry so when we do a little bit of layout um, there is some trigonometry in there and they I don't do that in here uh, I'm not going to fib in our tree there is tons of math but so much is done on computers for us now that it's quite crazy to be honest um, we get a lot of stuff punched in on computers and then it goes up to the machine and then the machine runs it and all of that but I'd say fractions, honestly, is probably the biggest thing for us and, and understanding um, decimals to fractions and, and like millimeters to fractions and, and that kind of math. So I guess when I was younger, they called it trades math. Um, and that's what I would go with is, is a trades math kind of thing. Um, yeah. Again, fractions, tape measures. Uh, I've had a lot of kids start with us and not know what a tape measure is and how to use it. So that's a that's a crazy one to me because I just assume everyone would not use a tape measure, right? Um, we had one kid who struggled for a year, and we would just take our time, each of us, to to teach him a little bit more each time. But in the end, he got it, and we were really proud of him. So, it, it, yeah, fractions. Just on your fraction thing, I was in interviews for 75 kids for trade samplers, and we asked the same question: What's half plus five eighths? How many yeah, kids? Of 70, how many kids of 75 do you think could answer that of grade tens? One and an eighth of them. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it was less than five. Yeah, and we did them five. 15, it, 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 was, it was hard for me to them. know that. <laughs> So. As soon as you said it, I did the math in my head right away, right? Like, I'm like, oh, I know the answer to that. But, <laughs> and, and that's it. They don't um, tape measures. Like, literally take a tape and, and get them to measure something and then add it to something else. And, and look at the tape and know what the lines mean. Because that's, that's crazy to quite a few of them also, right? Why is there so many lines on there, Sheila? Well, there's 30 seconds, there's 16 there, yeah. So... Teaching them that when they first come in is, I'm actually surprised sometimes that they don't know that. But I grew up with a grandpa who did things, so that helped me. I do, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna step in for a second um, and then, cause there's two practical things I need to make sure we cover. And then I'll, we'll just leave it uh, open-ended. People can can keep asking questions and sharing stories um, uh, until everyone's bored and wants to go home. And unless you're already home uh, until it's dinner time. Um, but yeah, so two things. So um, we are going to continue this, uh, these kind of webinars throughout the rest of the year. Um, if you are finding them interesting, um, after this, I'm going to send out just sort of a feedback request for to everyone to say, like, okay, this we really liked and this we want to see more of and you can skip uh, the jokes next time. Um, so do like, please be as honest as you can, because uh, as we go, we're going to open up the audience broader and broader um, throughout the year. So if I ask for your feedback and there's also if you have projects or other ideas that you want to share or you want to see, um, like if you want to learn more about what is glazing and what kind of projects can I do with glazing in my classroom, um, please just send that to us and part of our summer is to go out and to develop those. So um, please do feel free to ask. Um, I think our, our next uh, webinar is in June, the third week of June likely, same thing, third Thursday of June. Um, I know it's probably exam week for most people so they'll be fading up. Um, so maybe we'll have a, a beach theme. I'm not sure. 
Uh, the other piece I did want to highlight is we're going to post this uh, video um, live, or uh, not live, the recording of it. We'll post it up um, so you can share it with others and go back and, and check, check out on things. Um, and then uh, we are also working um, with the ITA and a couple of the uh, industry organizations and employers to develop uh, more trades projects similar to the Gmail toolbox and some of the other ones that you see. Um, so that, that's, that is coming in the next year. Uh, most likely the first round of those is going to be live for September. Again, feedback, or if you want to be part in making those, let us know. Um, to the point around the uh, tie into math as well, uh, just a quick announcement that uh, come September, there's going to be a few new resources coming up from us that are directly related to core curriculum. So there is like a, a math and measuring cups project coming out. Um, in addition, we worked with um, the IBW and some partners to develop the uh, uh, um, combined math 11 physics 11 curriculum using electronics and electrical. Uh, so that is a 12 project. Uh, it's 12 units, but each unit is a project that covers all the math 11 and physics 11 curriculum. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and as always, uh, you can join our newsletter where we infrequently but importantly send out announcements. So feel free to jump on the skills ready website or just heckle me until I respond. But the part that everybody's been uh, waiting for, of course, or most people have forgotten about, is Steve Spohl. Um, I'm going to put it here. So Steve Spohl, and I've written everybody except um, the ITAs and our names into it. So sorry, Maureen, Lisa, and Jason. Um, but I felt like that's nepotism. Uh, so I am the only one in the COVID safe way that can do this. So I'm going to close my eyes, mix it up. Uh, someone yell, stop. OK, how's it going? All right. Oh, there's two. Oh, this is why you shouldn't use sticky notes. All right, so we're gonna, we'll just split it into two. So we've got Colin and Saul. That seems the only fair way. So I'll split the prize and send you each half, Colin and Saul. So I'll follow up with both of you on that. Um, so yeah, so thanks again for joining us today. And we'll leave the room open till everybody bails and heads out. I'll stop recording so that you don't have to uh, worry about uh, holding your swearing back. So thank you, Sheila, for... Uh, managing that. Uh, and Thank you for allowing me to curse now. <laughs> yeah. All right. There's no